It's Wednesday, July 9th, 2025, and we have three isolated areas of severe weather expected in the U.S. today with two slight risks. One up here is going to be in the northern plains and another one down here in the mid-Atlantic. And these are going to be surrounded by an associated marginal risk of severe weather with their respective hazards. With our northern plains risk area actually stretching a bit down into the central plains and then back into the Rockies. And of course, we have a marginal risk out here in eastern Michigan. Today's threat is going to be mostly fueled by the risk of severe winds out here in the mid-Atlantic and the southeast. We have a 15% chance of severe winds. And in this corridor stretching from Delaware, Maryland, and even down into the northern tip of South Carolina is where that risk is going to be most expected. Then there is a conditional 5% risk surrounding it. So anywhere in this area is where storms producing in excess of 60 mile an hour gust are possible. Same goes up here in eastern Michigan. And then back up here in the northern plains, we have another 15% risk of severe winds. So a general higher probability of them happening in this box. In central South Dakota, then we have a pretty odd shaped large conditional area of a 5% risk with a lot of uncertainty about if there will even be any storms down here in the central plains. But if we do get a couple of organized clusters, they could be strong. And our largest hail threat today is going to be out here in the northern plains. We have a hatch 15% chance of some large hail, possibly at around two inches in diameter in northern South Dakota and southern North Dakota. And then we have another conditional 5% risk of some hail, which stretches down all the way into the central plains. We have another 5% chance of hail out here in eastern Michigan, then a smaller, very conditional 5% chance of hail out here in the mid-Atlantic in our 5% areas. That's just for the conditional risk of hail in excess of being quarter sized. And up here in the Northern Plains in Northern South Dakota and Southern North Dakota, we have a very conditional 2% risk of tornadoes. So if there were to be any tornadoes today, it would likely be up here in this region. And for our flood risk today, we have two areas of concern, one being up here in the Central Plains and another one stretching all the way from Central Texas, all the way up into the Northeast and in our marginal risk, we can expect probably one to two inches of rain. Then in our slight risk, this is the highest probability of seeing lots of rainfall today, is going to be up here in the mid-Atlantic. And in this area, there could be widespread swaths of four inches of rain. We can see that in the afternoon hours, it looks like there's going to be a large swath of rain dropped, extending from eastern Georgia all the way up into Delaware and southern New Jersey, with our greatest area of concern being along the I-85 corridor stretching from Charlotte to Greensboro, North Carolina. And in this area, there could even be isolated areas receiving five inches of rain, but widespread swaths of three to four inches can be expected. And it looks like a lot of the U.S. will be experiencing below average, if not normal temperatures, especially out here anywhere east of the Great Plains, with the exception of some slightly above average temperatures along the eastern coast. But out here in the western United States, excluding the western coastal states in Nevada, is an area where a lot of above average temperatures can be expected, ranging anywhere from the low 90s to 100, with a particularly intense corridor being out here stretching from our central to northern plains. Here's a simulated reflectivity from our northern plains risk area. And we can see that around early afternoon, we start to get signs of some organized convection occurring along an area of some very weak frontal activity, some troughing, and possibly a low pressure system back here in parts of eastern Wyoming and eastern Colorado. And it looks like these will be mostly a fairly unorganized cluster of storms, bringing a mostly wind and hail threat until they interact with a stationary boundary, which will be draped across the central Dakotas and then back through Nebraska. And when they do this, it will also coincide with when the low level jet starts to kick in. And that is when these storms could possibly pose an isolated tornado risk. And the risk for all hazards of severe weather would pretty much be over in the early evening hours in South Dakota. But it looks like up here in North Dakota, we could get a cluster of storms going along some of that troughing, which would then travel into parts of western Minnesota in early Thursday morning. Here's a different look from our Central Plains view, and we can see that cluster storms that was mentioned a bit earlier from up here in the Northern Plains. And then interestingly, we see another pretty strong looking cluster down here in Nebraska, which would eventually push into Kansas. And this would also be initiated by the help of some troughing, possibly a low pressure system back here in eastern Wyoming and eastern Colorado. And then a high pressure system is going to be back here, which is going to provide some organizing shear. Then on the periphery, there's going to be an area of increased moisture for these storms. And it looks like the severe wet with our cluster down here in Nebraska would begin in the late afternoon with these storms in their early stages posing a hail and wind threat and possibly even the threat 
of a spin-up tornado, although that's going to be pretty unlikely because these are mostly going to be all high-based storms. And then this storm will probably maximize in intensity in the evening hours when it will be also interacting with that stationary boundary that was draped across the central Dakotas and then actually curves a bit down here into Nebraska. And this cluster could produce some gust in excess of 65 miles an hour. However, it's a question of if this cluster will even happen because the forcing out here is going to be so weak. But if it were to happen, it would bring a threat of hail and winds in its early, more discrete stages. And when it turns into a line, it would bring a pretty widespread threat of severe winds stretching all the way down into northern Kansas. And it looks like if this line were to occur, it would be a bit more long lasting with it lasting all the way into Thursday morning before it falls apart and just becomes a rainmaker. And here's the simulated reflectivity from our mid-Atlantic risk area. And we can see that around lunchtime today, we're gonna start to see some storms form along a low pressure system situated behind a front. And in their early stages, they'll mostly just be weak, disorganized rainmakers. But as we get closer to sunset in the late afternoon, they really start to get their act together with a widespread threat of severe winds really being possible anywhere from southern New Jersey down to northern South Carolina with our most intense cluster of storms expected behind a low pressure system. And when it's interacting with that front right up here near Baltimore and the storms in this area that's expected to be most intense will bring the threat of some small hail, mostly severe winds. And I wouldn't even rule out the threat of possibly a weak spin up tornado and anywhere south of that would mostly just be severe winds. So after sunset and after the low level jet is done interacting, and fueling these storms, it looks like they'll mostly fall apart and just be in rainmakers as night falls. And our last area of interest is going to be out here in Michigan, and it's actually going to be a similar story to our mid-Atlantic risk area where we have a low pressure system and then storms interacting with the boundary. And then they'll also be fueled by some upper level forcing. But it looks like these storms will be mostly pretty disorganized. And in that disorganized state, they would mostly only bring that threat of some isolated severe gust in excess of 60 miles an hour. Here's a look at our 500 millibar winds and we can see a short wave pushing through parts of the northern mid-Atlantic and northeast. And this will help to initiate some of our storms down here in this risk area. And then we see a large high pressure system down here in the four corner states, which is going to wedge some air between the jet stream up here and the northern plains and that could provide some upper level forcing for these storms as well as some organizational shear but as we push forward we see that there's really not going to be a lot of it so that is a reason why the question of will there really be any storms anyways to really take advantage of this environment is being asked and then up here in the northern plains we can see our big trough start to move through and that will bring some of the upper level forcing for our storms in our North and South Dakota risk area. Here's a weather sounding for our Northern Plains risk area, and we see some decent curving in our low levels of our hodograph, then a nice elongation out. And that is gonna be one of the reasons why a tornado risk has been highlighted for this reason. Our low level holistic is gonna be pretty low and our low level shear is gonna be pretty low, but as we get closer to when those storms fire, and interact with that boundary when the low level jet is in play these ingredients will definitely be quite a bit more favorable then our bulk shear is going to be around 30 knots which would be favorable for some organized storms and that's going to be coupled with some wind veering which will also help to organize those storms now the main hindrance of that tornado threat is going to be a lowest cloud level that's going to be super high off the ground so it looks like the main threat with this is just going to be some high based wind and hail storms now for the hail threat we do have some cape up here near our freezing level and our mid-level lapse rates are going to be pretty conducive for some hail at 8.6 Celsius decrease in air kilometer. And that's going to be coupled with some assumably strong updrafts from our storms. And then we're going to have a fairly moist environment, which would be conducive for severe weather. And then we do have some dry air aloft, which would support that threat of severe winds. And our atmosphere is going to be pretty juiced up at 3,000 joules per kilogram. So very conducive for some severe weather. Our precipitate water is going to be 1.33 inches. Then our downdraft cape is going to be really high at 1,800. And then our low level relative humidity is going to be pretty low. So that would be conducive for some evaporative cooling. And then coupled with these other ingredients, it's definitely an environment which would support the threat of some strong severe winds. So all in all, it looks like the storms in the Northern Plains will be mostly high-based wind and hail storms. Here's a weather sounding from a little bit more south in our Central Plains risk area. And our hodograph doesn't look super conducive of any certain types of severe weather. And our bulk shear is gonna be very low at 23 knots. And this is gonna be coupled with some very, very, very weak wind veering. So it's pretty much gonna be completely negligible. And our lowest cloud level is gonna be a bit higher, which would be supportive 
of a wind threat if storms were to materialize. Our low level lapse rates are going to be really conducive for a wind threat. Then our mid level lapse rates are going to be 8.2 Celsius decrease per kilometer. And that's going to be coupled with a decent bit of cape up here near our freezing layer. However, because our bulk shear is so low, hail would still be pretty small with these storms. We do have a decent bit of dry air aloft, which would support that threat of severe winds. Then we have a fairly moist environment, which would be supportive of severe weather, along with a very juiced up atmosphere at around 3,300 joules per kilogram of cape. Our precipital water would be 1.35 inches. Our downdraft cape would be 1,500. Then our relative humidity would be lower, so some evaporative cooling could become in play. And coupled with our other ingredients, a strong wind threat could be realized. So it looks like our storms in the central plains, if they do fire at all, could pose a threat for some strong, severe winds. This is weather sounding from the mid-Atlantic, and our hodograph does have some curvature in the lower levels, and our SRH is going to be hinting at being a little better, and our shear is going to be hinting at being a little bit better in the lower levels, and these storms could interact with that boundary when the low-level jet kicks in as well, which would make these more conducive. And our bulk shear is going to be nearing 30 knots, so possibly some organized storms. Although the mode is expected to be pretty linear, we also have some veering in our winds, which could help with storm organization. And our lowest cloud level is going to be low enough to possibly support the threat of some weak spin-up tornadoes. So whenever you get a setup with a low-pressure system and storms interacting with the boundary coinciding with the low-level jet, I definitely do think possibly a weak spin-up tornado is in play closer to that lower pressure system in Maryland. And then hail isn't really going to be an issue at all out here because our lapse rates are going to be very poor. However, we do have a very moist environment and a, a juiced up atmosphere at around 2,600 joules per kilogram of Cape. So that is why some severe storms will be possible out here today. Then a very high precipital water air mass at 2.17, which is a reason for that large rainfall expected with these storms and possibly some stronger downdrafts. And our three cape is going to be 170, which would support that threat of severe winds and possibly a weak spin up tornado in the mid-Atlantic. The last weather sounding we're going to take a quick peek at is going to be out here in eastern Michigan. We do have a very straight hodograph and then our bulk shear is going to be nearing 30 knots and it could be expected to be a little bit higher with some of that 500 millibar flow. We also have a lack of wind veering, so that is one of the reasons why storms might not be super organized out here. However, our freezing layer isn't gonna be super high and we do have some cape up here near it. And our mid-level lapse rates are gonna be above that six Celsius decreasing per kilometer threshold at 6.3. So that is a reason why there is a conditional risk for possibly some dime-sized tail out here. And then because we have a moist, unstable environment, it could be conducive for some severe storms. And our precipital water is gonna be 1.41 coupled with the downdraft cape of 1200. Then our three cape is gonna be 147. So all things that would support that threat possibly some severe winds. However, it looks like the storm mode out here will be very messy and not super organized. So that could hinder the chance of them being able to take advantage of this environment, which would support some severe winds.